Okay. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. This meeting of the uh, Reading Municipal Light Department Board of Commissioners is being broadcast live at the RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street in Reading. Live broadcasts are available only in Reading, uh, but the meeting was videotaped uh, for distribution to the community TV stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair. Uh, we ask that all questions and comments from the public uh, be directed to the chair and that all parties act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board. Uh, once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. Dave Hennessy, our newest commissioner, is um, not able to attend tonight due to a work uh, a commitment. Phil will be the board secretary. Okay. And um, hello, Dennis Kelly. He's going to be the um, cab representative tonight. Sure. Uh, okay, and is there anybody? I don't think there's anybody from the public to comment, but I'll ask anyway because it's on the agenda. Um, I do have a, a brief report that I'd like to make. Uh, first of all, that on April 1, a very important meeting in town, which is the uh, economic development meeting with uh, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council is, is part of that. It'll be at the Senior Center at 6.30, and I plan on attending, and I, I saw John's name. I don't know if anybody else, I think Jane and Colleen are probably going to go. RMLD can be a key part of economic development with our low electricity rates, and so it's great that this meeting is happening, and we hope to participate. Also, I'll probably hand this one over to Jane. Um, uh, Jane is acting as general manager tonight in Colleen's absence, but we have some progress on at least getting a process going for identifying sol uh, sites for community solar. And Jane, you want to just sure. get Be into happy the to. Yeah. Um, after our, I believe it was either the December or January meeting that members of the Reading Climate Committee Action Committee um, attended. Um, Tom O'Lilla from my department met with the committee members as a whole. Uh, and they agreed to form an ad hoc committee for community shared solar. Uh, they've met twice since. Um, members of that committee include uh, Gina Snyder, Joan Bowler, and Mike that was here at the meeting. Um, their next meeting is scheduled for Monday at 7 o'clock here at the Light Department. Um, in addition to that, um, Tom has met with Jesse Wilson from the uh, Town of Reading Community and Planning Division. Um, and Jesse has agreed to be a part of that committee and is going to uh, solicit any uh, other interest from the town of Reading. Um, uh, in addition to that, we're developing a press release um, indicating the progress that we're making, uh, the hope of going from our Green Choice program, which is a uh, form of rec payment, to including uh, power uh, renewable projects into our portfolio to having something tangible on our, on our system within each of the four towns. So we're working on the business model. We're working with Reading closely, but with the eventual hope to have community solar in all the towns that we serve. That's great to see. And um, is it just the municipal buildings, or are we still looking for an industrial land site if we're more um, available? I think we want it to be uh, accessible to, to, the, to the residents. Um, I, I think that's our first goal. Um, if we can't go, then we'll look at other sites. Um, I think as, it, as, it, as, as the program expands and depending on the, um, the need, if there's commercial customers that are really interested, we might have to look at that those types of sites as well. So we're not we're not really narrowing it down, but we're first focusing on municipal buildings. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the third one is just that um, I I, have a, I understand that there's a, a private company that may want to actually add to our fiber optic network in in our district uh, that we would build it and they would use it. And um, it's this might. I just think it is po it's, it's a good idea for the board to maybe have the policy committee take a look at when it is that we should be involved in making decisions and setting strategy on this part of, of our business. Mm -hmm. I think to date, Great. over the past 15 years, there's been contracts that have been signed and it never came to the board's attention, and that's probably maybe that's fine. But So I guess I'd just like to schedule a policy meeting where we can take a look at that. Check with Jeannie, but I think April 23rd. Yeah, we have a policy meeting scheduled, right? Yes, already. So, so maybe we could include it on that agenda. Just add an agenda item, and we can just start thinking about what, if anything, we should be doing on that front. Okay. And with that, we'll move on to the um, report of the committees. And Phil? Yeah, the only thing I have on the, the policy committee did meet, uh, and we did look at the uh, surplus property uh, policy, and I 
think we pretty much kind of got the general idea and we'll defer this for a little bit more scrubbing at this point. Um, and I had, um, I didn't mean to interrupt go ahead, you. Go ahead, go ahead, I'm done. I, I had an email from uh, Mark Doxer of FinCom that they did, they did, uh, I am waiting to hear what happened last night at last night's FinCom, but that the first phase of their their project is, is completed and they liked the policy changes that were made. And I'm just waiting to hear a final word from him on that and maybe we can um, talk about that more formally at the next meeting. Um, and then we have uh, general manager's report, Jane. Yep, um, prior to uh, her meeting calling going on vacation, um, I had a conversation with them regarding the LIDOS organizational study and the booth reliability study. Uh, those uh, are set to be completed um, within the next two to three weeks, so they should be done by the end of uh, March, beginning of April. Um, and then I know Jeannie's trying to schedule an appointment um, or a committee meeting, a board meeting for a presentation from directly from both Lidos and uh, Booth uh, to the full board of commissioners. And we'll I, I think we're shooting for May uh, due, to, due to the uh, town meeting the last week of ap uh, April. When do you expect the... Uh their final reports to be in hand? They could be in their inboxes as we speak. Okay. Um, so it's either the, l the last week of March or the first week of April. And then is this is a copy that we, that we still review one more time before it's actually final final or, or this is the last version of it? Uh, we'll find out. I don't have an answer to that, okay, but I, will, I can check with Colleen. Colleen will be back on Monday okay. and I'll have her send out an email and let you know that. Great. Uh, anything else? Well, that is the amendment that was made, and you told me that Jane was going to be mm -hmm. there this time. Okay, fine. Okay. Good. Um, were you all, is that it, Jane? Yes. Okay. Um, and so, power supply report from uh, Bill. Are you able to hear for? Uh, Just the mic. There's a clip on. Oh, he's got a clip on. Okay, he's got a clip on. Okay, okay I didn't see that. Didn't see that. Okay. Thanks, Bill. for the whole year or for the yeah that's these are annual numbers right but for the whole year uh, uh, but it's a, excuse me but it's an expanded scale is that correct i can't see it over there but it is that's correct it's the, the base actually starts around september 35 oh i see it's okay a huge number I, yeah, over yeah. Over 735, which is why you see this dramatic dip here it's not as dramatic as it looked it was still significant about a six percent drop That's very, it's a very interesting 
graphic you put together there. Yeah, we're on the, we're on the Twitter beside that link today. Uh -huh. if, if I may. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that will also include, obviously, their energy conservation efforts probably embedded in that as right. well, right? Uh, so once, once we get comfortable with our the co-ocean weather, some of that is definitely less types of weather, so I'll be watching that in the future. Um, then, then we'll try to figure out um, economies of the economy, or is it the conservation of That would be some energy that will be available. That's right. Because that, that lowest one, is that 09? That, that's very interesting. That's the economy right there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then just to move on to uh, some figures about February. February is all about coal. Um, if you compare the mean temperature, the average mean temperature for red acres, so you see the black acres, between 2014 and 2015, the average mean temperature in 2014 February was a banner month. We're going to hear in a little, a little later in the evening. As far as sales, oh yeah. So it, it, it was a better. I think even of the last board meeting in February, the night of the board meeting, we were pretty much already at the point where we could start doing sales. Figures. Interesting. Stony Brook Intermediate in that period, and that jumped from 7.8 percent in 2014 up to over 12 percent in 2015. So that was picking up the kilowatt hours that we needed to get down. Could have, could have possibly come from the infrastructure for the city. Mm -hmm. The data indicates that it's pretty much the flat that was picked up by Stony Brook. Mm -hmm. Which just gives you a comparative. In the city of the month in 2014, the output was actually higher in Stony Brook. But then when you get to the end of the month, this line here is the blue days of 2015. You can see that there's there was some significant generation in just these last two years. So and, and the significance of um, Stony Brook is mm -hmm. that it's more expensive, less expensive uh, than our general portfolio. And our portfolio right now. So okay, good. So um, so I go back to a previous chart. It says Stony Brook is uh, the cost of energy dollars per megawatt hour is one hundred and seventy three dollars, right. which is pretty high compared. It's the it's the third highest of our sources. So we 
only want to see it running in the local location of Mike and Price probably the highest amount. Okay. That's Great. Something yeah. Call or call or go out or go out to Mike. Good. Thank you. What does that show again? What's the red and what's the blue? I don't have that in my board book. Oh, the table, yeah. Oh, the table, right? It's not, the it's not graphically. Um, yeah, yeah, table. Got it for. question about your first um, slide okay. just going back to that one it would be great to have that with the zero uh, I know it's going to be a much more subtle but to see with zero at the bottom um, I was reading some rep uh, reports from the IEA saying that so there's this flat total kilowatt but then there's peaks are actually going up relative to average consumption that 20 years ago, the peak was 50% higher than the average day. Like the peak day was 50% higher than the average day in New England, and now it's like 70 or 80% above the average day, something like that. We can, we can do that and incorporate that with our, when we start breaking out our information to look at our peaks and, and in relationship to our that energy. That would be good, and I, and I think the trend is going ever upward, and I, th I believe as from what I'm reading is the reason is that the base power that people are using it, things are actually getting more efficient, uh, lighting, refrigerators, and whatnot. But the climate stuff, when it's a hot day, it's only so much more efficient it gets, and more people are getting them, so the peaks are getting worse. And the point of it would just be that it shows the value of this stuff that's going to be coming down the pipe, the uh, smart uh, technologies that Hamid was talking about at the last meeting are only going to grow. Mm -hmm. So I think it would be important to think about that and be able to tell that to the community that whatever, however expensive it might seem, it's only going to be more valuable to put this stuff in over time. Emily, um, is there any reason we can't have these charts in our... No, that is the plan. Um, unfortunately, because of the timing of the month and when purchase okay. power settled, okay. um, <laughs> we're going to include all the charts in with, in with the packet material. It's okay, just great. the timing Thank issue you. for this month. So our apologies to you. Any other questions? No, that's great. That's great, Bill. Thank you very much. Very useful. And um, yeah, I'd love to have the raw data set on that too, if you don't mind shooting me an email. Yeah, thank you. Move the RMLD Board of Commissioners authorize the general manager to execute one or more power supply agreements in accordance with RMLD's wholesale power supply plan for power supply purchases for a period not to exceed 2016 through 2019 in amounts not to exceed 31 megawatts in 2016, 29 megawatts in 2017, 27 megawatts in 2018, 
and 25 megawatts in 2019, represented by the Director of Integrated Resources and on the recommendation of the RMLB Citizens Advisory Board. Second. Should add also and the General Manager. Uh, that was the General Manager should be added to that list. Okay. Is that a motion and a second? Um, yeah. all, second. All, all in favor? We have uh, a four to O vote. Yep. Motion carries. Yep. Good. And uh, engineering and operations report. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Hamid is on vacation, um, and the uh, chief engineer Peter Price was going to be here to present this report. However, he had a conflict, and he's unable to be here. All right. Um, so I'll just touch on some of the highlights, and if there's any specific questions, I'd be happy to get those to Peter and get responses to the board. Um, uh, the projects are accelerating. Currently, uh, there was a lot of weather related in February, so um, if you look at some of the capital uh, outlies, there wasn't a lot of spending uh, on those projects. Safi, Sadie, Katie are all below the regional and the national averages. Um, for the month of February, we uh, managed the storms very well. There were uh, eight area outages. Uh, for February, five of them were equipment related, two of them were vehicles, and one of them was caused by a tree. Um, and like I said, if you have any specific questions with any of the budget items or the capital projects, I'd be happy to get you some answers. Thank you. Bob? Good evening. Good evening. Tonight, I'm going to be presenting the uh, February financials, which represents the first eight months of this fiscal year. Looking at the month of February, uh, the actual month itself came in at a net loss, a negative change in net assets of about $81,000, which decreased our year-to-date net income to about $2.74 million. We had budgeted at this time about $1.5 million, which resulted in net income being over budget by about $1.3 million. The 2.7 that we are actually showing for net income, uh, you have to consider the actual year-to-date fuel revenue has exceeded fuel expenses by $300,000 and the purchase power capacity and transmission revenues exceeded the expenses by about $700,000. So those are the two pass-through amounts, and we're coming in higher. So we still have four more months to get that as close as possible. It's our best guesstimate. So the 2.7 looks robust, but we have uh, about a million of that represents uh, the pass-through, not including any expense, but that's just how it shakes out. Uh, on the revenues, uh, Page 3A, year-to-date base revenues under budget by about $200,000. Actual base revenues came in at 14.8, compared to the budget amount of 15 million. Um, I have a little slide up here. What it's trying to show is that we had reforecasted our base revenue uh, in the late fall by about, we, we decreased it by about $350,000. And for the first eight months, we're actually doing a little better than our reforecast number by about $120,000. But because the numbers are so close, uh, they line, line up the, w the way they do, and you don't see too much of a spread. On the expense side, uh, the year-to-date purchase power base expense was over budget by $365,000, or about 1.9%. Actual purchase power base cost came in at $19.5 million, compared to our budgeted amount of $19.2 million. On the operating and maintenance side, expenses combined were over budget by about $93,000 or 1%. The actual O&M expenses came in at $9.5 million compared to the budget amount of 9.4. The next uh, is really, uh, these numbers are even closer, but we're able to spread them out a little bit. So basically, uh, we, we, we did reforecast um, our, our operating maintenance, depreciation, and, and town payment expenses. And uh, they all came in pretty flat. But act, uh, the first results for the first eight months were about $85,000 higher in expenses compared to our reforecasted amount. But the reforecasted amount was pretty much in line with the budget amount, so we are trying to hold costs down as much as possible. On the cash side, page nine, the operating fund is at a healthy $12 million. Capital fund balance is at 5.7 million. The rate stabbed at 6.7. Deferred fuel is down to 4.4 million, and the energy conservation fund balance is at $566,000. On the general information side, page five, as Bill had mentioned earlier, due to the cold month in uh, February, <coughs> uh, actual kilowatt hour sales uh, 
total year to date of 476 million, which is about a million ahead of last year's actual figure. Now, having said that, March is preliminary numbers look like we'll be coming in lower than last year's actual. Um, but for the first eight months, um, we can be kind of caught up uh, due, due to the lever. On the budget side, cumulatively, the five divisions were over budget by $65,000. And just as an aside, uh, we're finalizing the capital and the operating budgets, which will be start being presented uh, next month. We're at 2.7 now, and we're over budget. Do you anticipate we're going to come in over budget for the year to date? On the? For the year, for the once we get done to the end of June. We're still I mean trying to come in at uh, around 2.5 million, which is yes, pretty close to uh, 7 8%. Uh, so if you look at the past three, and I said it's about 1.7, um, we may have to cut some expenses the last four months, and depending if uh, the weather cooperates or how, how businesses go, we should come pretty close, I think, come June. Bid 2015-19 for one walk-in van be awarded to Boston Freight Liner for $139,802 as the lowest qualifying and responsive bidder in the recommendation of general manager. Second. Second. All in favor? Oh, no. I have to explain. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, uh, this this van is for technical services. Um, uh, this van will be used as a mobile testing truck. Um, a lot of the uh, maintenance work at the substations was formerly uh, outsourced, and the, the intention now with uh, Hamid's maintenance programs is to have um, personnel from the RMLD trained and being able to do this work internally. So this van will allow them to transport ACDC test equipment, oil containment, hazmat equipment um, to the various substations um, that we own on all of these ter service territories. Uh, there were two bidders here. Um, included in the bid is a trade-in of truck number 48. Uh, both uh, bidders um, had the exact same trade-in value for that. Um, and as uh, Phil had indicated, Boston Freight uh, was the lowest qualified and responsive bidder. And what, is, what will this bring in this in-house save, do you know? Maybe Hamid knows. And yeah, Hamid and Colleen, I don't have that uh, in terms of Contracting work. Yeah, um, mo moving it in house rather than do it. I'll get that number for yeah. you. Um, but it was a capital by uh, a budget item for 2015, and it's coming. Uh, the budget item was for 150 thousand, so it came in below the uh, budget amount. So we've had a, 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 a motion and a second. Yep. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Thank you, and I think. That about wraps it up. Um, any other discussion? Yeah, I think we just need to settle some dates. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Julie, do you have any uh, proposed I dates? Or? I have the next board meeting for the May 14th and May 29th. We can't have an April 30th because town meeting and I've gone over. And I, what I'm endeavoring is on the 14th, I'd like to get the organization and all of that reliability study. Huh and they're coming out of state, so that's why we know the 14th, and I checked with Dave Hanke, he can go from the state okay. as well. I guess my next question to the board is, we also have to get in the budget piece. Um, April is gonna be kind of tough, because one of the members is gonna make a mistake if we put a point six in the town meeting <laughs> on top of that. Yeah. Right. So that's really gonna go to April. Um, CAB will be meeting, um, Tom's gonna cover the meeting on the 15th, of April, and you're gonna cover April 22nd, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be in Boston. I don't know if the meeting, I was thinking maybe if we can start the board meetings at 6.30 on both those dates, and if we can operate on one date and capital, it's up to you. You mean, it's, uh, uh, have them be on the same night as the cab meetings? No, no, no. for the board meetings on, the on May, May right? On Our board meetings on May 14th, I don't know if you want me to start. Double them up, you mean? Well, it's, well at, six start at, at 6.30, 
Okay. So we can do the budget. That sounds like a good idea to me. Board. Yeah, sounds that's fine. fine. That yeah. sounds good that to sounds do it all. Yep. And then on the 28th, start at 6.30 as well. So we can, the budget will take a bit much longer, but we can start soon start the meeting off with the budget. Okay. Yep. That sounds that's like right. a good plan to me. That's fine. So that they've covered everything. So we have yeah. like four meetings. And then on April 23rd, we're going to have the policy committee meeting to go over more of the budget. Okay. And I'm writing an email in to go over as far as Okay. So are we going to have, you're saying we should not have a meeting on the 30th, right? So. We, well, I don't want to put it because 27th and the 30th are town meetings. And I, if we post it, I, I have two people that have to travel out of state. Got it. So, so we'll make it the 23rd, yeah. Thursday, the 23rd yeah. uh, of April? That's for the policy. Okay. Yeah. May 14th, the board meeting. But it says start at 630 because we're going to incorporate our budget. Because mm -hmm. we've seen a budget committee meeting. Yep. So why do that? Why don't we just have the whole full board there and then right. agree? Well, if we all say if we have no regular April 1st, it's the day for the council. Right. Yeah, so May 14th would be the day for the council. Right. Right. Well, because we're dancing around town meeting. Yeah, no, I, I get it. And we have one board member that's going on between the 15th and the 26th. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. And then we have town meeting, so we can't. Okay. <laughs> That's not what you need to be going to tax return <laughs> sitting on my on my floor to say. You can all relate. We <laughs> all have all so everybody can make the fourteenth and the twentieth. Yeah. Yep. So we're we're all set. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's still a meeting. Okay. I think it probably is going to be April. I think that'd be a better because yeah. we have a lot of meetings in April this year. Yeah. So we're all kind of together. Right. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Good plan. Great. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Um. Please. I move, move to adjourn. Second. Second. Yep. All in favor? Yeah. That's another 4 0. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.